Jason, and we're doing some interior stuff. So I got the Bronco partially disassembled because I got some good scores at the junkyard the other day. I'm going to show you and I'm going to teach you how to put them in. So I got a treasure trove of parts the other day. I already had these, the side panels that are going to go in the back of the Bronco with the, uh, the cup holders and ashtrays. Uh, I got a couple other interior trim pieces up there, the parts that go around the uh, door sills, things like that. And then I, that's from the Bronco, that came with it, but I found two bonuses, center console or center seat option. Um, pretty good score, that center seat, I was looking online and those things go for like three to four hundred dollars for one in really nice condition, which to me is insane. And a center console, factory Ford option, it's in like kind of a grayish color instead of the blue same with the seat but i think they'll match okay uh, center console does have the uh the latch hardware and everything i just found one that had the broken latch and i found one that was red that had the good latch so i went ahead and took the latch off the one took the center console out of the other uh, but i actually really like the seat the seat's got a little storage compartment and cup holders built into the top and when you flop it up, boom, you got extra seatage. I need to repaint these mounts. That one's starting to get some rust on it. So I'm going to try and clean it up, treat it a little bit. But uh, this thing mounts and installs underneath the brackets for the seats that are in it. So what I did was I took the passenger seat out. That's going to be the way we come in. I took the uh, seat belt brackets out so I had more space. And I took just the passenger side bolts well we'll call them the passenger side bolts out of the driver's side seat and boop, you can see right there now this thing will lift up just enough that we can slide that bracket underneath bolt the center seat in with the two front seats so it shares the same bolt locations i did take the passenger seat all the way out just to clear myself a landing space here but we should be able to slide this thing in just right, lift this up, slide the bracket underneath, and then bolt everything back down. I also got new seatbelt hardware to put it in. And bonus thing I scored while I was there was uh, I got two more seatbelt assemblies for the rear. Because I plan on being able to remove the top on this thing. And when I do, you can see the seat belts in the 92 are mounted up in that roof. So they're gonna be useless. So what I did was I found a 95 Bronco that had these and they actually were on the seat lower, but I put them through the bolts in the seat top bracket. Still really heavy duty hardware. They are, uh, they're pretty well on there. The only thing I don't love is the brackets different on each side. So this one sits a couple inches up. That one's a couple inches down. They both work just fine. That's actually about the right comfortable height for me sitting in it. It goes right across my lap. It shares the original buckles on the inside. So that'll work even when the top's off. These are going to be safer, so these will be used most of the time. Top on when the top's off, though, boom. You got your, uh, you at least got your lap belt, so you got something holding you in this thing. Um, I got that from the 95. I got this center seat from a 95, which should fit in here just nice. And right, and then uh, the center console, I grabbed anyway because I wasn't sure which one I was going to go with. But I'll probably hang on to it for a while if I decide the seat is what I want. I can always sell that center console. They go for a, a pretty penny for these Broncos. So I can sell that and recoup the cost I got the seat for. Uh, all said and done, it was still a, still a good haul. I paid $86 for the seat, the center console, and all my seat belt assemblies. And I got some dash trim as well. Um, was able to get everything except for the one that goes around the instrument cluster. None of those were good in the junkyard, even in the F-150s. So I bought one online for 40 bucks. So we're going to see how that looks and works too. And I got a new uh, shift lever with the overdrive button. So we can switch that out and get our overdrive back. So good stuff coming. One thing I noticed is you sit awful high in this back seat um, as an adult back in here. But this would be a pretty sweet little ride with the roof off. I'm sitting right at about roll bar height. 
it's just over my head. Pretty cool. I'm excited to get the top off this thing and take it for a beach day. I even had Kayla change the oil in it today. So that was exciting. I did not get it on video. She was in a hurry. I didn't want to take all the time doing the, uh, the camera work. So I just had her go to town on it. it. Only took her about 15 minutes and I only had to coach her a little bit. So it's pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff. So she's already putting some work in on the car. And uh, I've got a couple other things in store for her to do. I'm going to have her help me with the detailing and some of the uh, cleaning up and repainting of some stuff. So she can kind of make it her own and put her own personal touch on it. But this thing is very close to ready. This will probably be the final video that I'm going to put up here of the uh, bringing back the Bronco series. Because after this, this thing's going on the road. It's getting used. And we'll still do little things to it here and there. And I'll put videos up as we improve on it. But as far as getting this thing to be a road-worthy, everyday driving vehicle, we're going to be there after today. Uh, went ahead and got the registration and tag sorted out. So this thing's going to hit the road this afternoon. So we flopped her right on in. Just got this seat put back in on top. I'm starting to bolt it up. Get that one lined up. That one's just finger tight over there, getting it set down. The only trick was I had to kind of bend on the legs here a little bit to get it lined up just right. It's like the center hump is a little bit taller than what it came out of, or it got smashed on the way here. Got that bolt back in, in the back. In the back, you can see there's the bolt there. The holes in this were larger than these, so that made it easier to center it and get it in there. Got that one lined up, tightened down. And then, same story back over here. We got that one in, just finger tight. We need to go tighten the other side. But it's in there, it's on. I noticed this bolt's loose, so we need to tighten that back up for the bracket. Only drag is these side covers are missing. But I think I could probably, uh, Maybe even touch that up with paint just with a brush, though. I don't want to spray anything. Too much tape off. But we're going to get this thing bolted in and clean this up, vacuum it out, see how it looks. Changed out the shift rod. It's the old one with a doorknob I shoved on there. Real easy to do. There's a cotter pin that goes right through this little hole. And then it just pulls right out. There's the cotter. You stick that in the notch in the column, put the cotter pin back in. Super simple. Now, we got a fresh clean one from an F-150 with the overdrive button in there that was broken off from the old, and it works. I tested it, turned the key forward, it works great. I got to scrape that blue marker paint off that the junkyard guy put on there for me. Super nice. But hey, we're in. Uh, I got an assembly to put in the dash here we're going to install, and then I've got the lower kick panel down here we got to put in. And then armor all wipe everything down. I need to put that door card back in. The only trim piece I'll be missing is this. I don't have the trim that goes around the uh, the AC controls, unfortunately. Um, but I should have everything else to put it back together. All right, who's ready? Ba -da! Got the door panels all cleaned up. I took the cranks off and painted them. Got the new dash bezel in. I do need to get this trim piece. I was missing that. I had to kind of piecemeal some stuff together. I'll probably paint all of this black, but I got this trim from the junkyard. Got it up for now. Got a fuse cover that all of my broken tabs, so I got it screwed in. Not the finest, but it's in there and hiding that fuse, trim, fuse panel. Got the Trim piece for this side that was in the truck when I got it. I was missing the other. I'm still missing that, but the rest of it's complete. Got the door panel on that side, painted that as well. This is the uh, this is the best part, that center seat there. Cup holder action, got the storage action. Bam, look at that. We can fit six deep in this bad boy. It's nice and clean back here too. Got the seat belts added in back there. We are just ready to roll now. She's looking good, running good. Outside's dirty again, but can't stop the pollen now. Really overall, I'm, I'm happy with it. This is that 
$30 trim piece that I got offline and it looks pretty good. Everything fits and finishes in pretty nice. My only, I guess, complaint with it would be where the lights are for the four wheel drive, the blinkers, all that good stuff. You can see through that and see the indicators all the time. So even without the bulbs lit up behind it, it's hard to tell that if they're on or not. I may at some point actually tint those maybe. But uh, aside from that, it's actually looking really nice in here. It looks like a regular old car that you could drive around. Need to get a cover for that kick panel. But really, she's looking good. She's looking ready for the road anyway. And that's where we're headed. But we got her back on her feet. Took her from probably what was destined to be the grave and uh, towed this thing home on a tow truck about a month ago. And here we are, ready to ride with it. I'd say it's a daily driver at this point. She's tagged, she's insured, she's running good, she's looking good, interior is nice and tidy. I mean, really, she doesn't need anything except for the little here and there love. Um, she's got some room for improvement, but everything's here, everything's working, it's ready to enjoy. So, breathe some new life into it, got it back on the road, now it's time to have some fun. We're enjoying the fruits of our labor. What you think? Love it. Not bad. Got four new tires on it, We're running down the road smooth. Expensive, but smooth. <laughs> Might be my new favorite in the fleet. They're fun as long as you're not changing out the water pump on them. <laughs> Gas gauge quit working though, so you gotta put that on the list. It was working great for like three days and then all of a sudden it quit. But it happened to quit right after we took the boat out. So my guess is maybe uh, when I was hooking up the wiring harness for that, maybe I knocked the ground loose or there was already a bad ground and it got out of whack. I'm hoping I can fix it and that it's not just a, uh, a sunk float. At least somebody siphoned off our gas. That's true. We thought maybe somebody <laughs> stole our gas, but I think... Uh, I think our fears of that are quenched. Yeah, old girl's doing good. Gotta change the brakes out on it though. You can hear a little bit of a clacking from the front right. As soon as you touch the brakes though, it stops. So I know it's not drivetrain, it's in the brakes, but... Calipers are brand new, but the uh, Pads might be, I don't know, maybe the pads got something going on with it, maybe the rotor's got something going on with it. I think possibly the rotor could be warped a little bit, but I think somehow it's just kind of chattering and the pads rubbing somehow weird and, and clicking. So that's on the to-do list. Look at that thing though. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Fancy new meats, Milestar Patagonia XTs. They were uh, pretty cheap, but I like them. They got some really good, nice, aggressive sidewall. Good meaty tread pattern, but they actually run pretty quiet on the road. We had it up on the highway, and they really weren't that noisy. They look good. They look better than the uh, the new BFG All Terrains, in my opinion. I do not care for the new. KO2s, which is a shame because that was my favorite tire. But I like these. We'll put them in the test for a while and see how they hold up. Well, she's ready to go. Needs a little cleaning up still, but she does good. <laughs> 